Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor back in the corner again with a bit of an impromptu product overview for you. Okay, you all know I've been working on the D-Day board, well it's a demo board for bolt action, yeah? So I had a word with uh, the infamous Rich D at Warlord and he managed to send me over a care package of terrain garnish for the board. So what have we got and what we're going to be looking at? Right, we've got their Atlantic wall bunkers, the resin ones, we've got their tank anti-tank obstacles, we've got the ruined farmhouse, we've got some barbed wire, we've got some sandbag emplacements and we've got some, uh, watch clip, these are actually from foreground but they're supplied via Warlord, we've got some uh, barbed wire barricades which will all look great on the board. Now, yeah, because they're not sort of products that you would typically use, they are very much as are models, what I'm going to do is sort of give you a brief overview of them and then I'm going to sort of include little bits from the project and the final thing so you can see them in situ and what I do with them and that sort of stuff. Yeah, I figure that's the best way of sort of showing this sort of stuff off, which are essentially, you know, otherwise it's just, here it is, you know what I mean? You know I like to do better than that. So I'm going to take you through the steps and what colours I paint things and all that sort of stuff. So, should let Compose yourself, Bose. Should we crack on? Let's crack on, eh? Right, guys. First thing we're going to look at is the biggies, which is the Atlantic Wall Bunkers. Okay, so there's a fair bit of weight in this. Uh, three pre-painted 28mm resin bunkers, and there are the pictures there. Yeah? Right, let me get this open, and let's have a look at them. Right, I've got them out of the box now. It was a bit of a challenge because they are incredibly well packed, bubble wrapped and stuffed in with all sorts of polystyrene balls and all sorts of things. So we've got our three bunkers. Now straight away, yeah, you can sort of see the, what you call it, the, the lines across them. These are actually the, the master moulds, it looks, have been made out of a uh, 5mm uh, foam board. Yeah, which is why you've got the lines. Now, the lines aren't a problem because when they actually made the Atlantic wall bunkers, this is how they did it. They, they do have lines on them in places. And that's because it's, they're done with a progressive pour where you have a channel, you pour a layer in, layer it set, and then you pour another layer. And that's why you'd get these lines. And the reason you did it that way was because if you tried to pull the full depth of the, the wall, the weight of the concrete would bust out of the, the wooden template that they used. Okay, so straight off, Three buildings, one small, one medium, one large. Okay, so start with the small one. Now if I bring it up, there you go, that's what we're looking at. Okay, now it is made out of, you know, layers of foam board. And I've got to say, yeah, I'm glad I've actually got these rather than having to craft, craft them myself because it does take some serious cutting to get them like this. Yeah, I don't know who did these. Yeah, but they are nice. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of precision cutting. Yeah, and then that's it with the lid on, yeah? There's a little bit of warping, a little gap in, if I bring that up close, you see? Yeah, you've got to expect that with long, flat resin bits, you know, it's the way it happens. On none of the bits is it anywhere near what I consider a deal breaker, yeah? So if I bring this one up, this is, this is a four-parter. It's got these two chevron bits here, which are op optional, or I suppose you could put them there. You know, it's down to you. Obviously the roof, it's been belt sanded smooth underneath. Yeah, they're pre-painted, yeah, and it looks like basically a, a, a black, black base coat with a progressively lighter dry brush. Now when we do the board, there's not much I can do on these, if you know what I mean, paint-wise, yeah, for, with regards to the base colour without repainting them completely. But when we do the board, yeah, I'll, I'll tart them up a little bit. Now here's the inside of that bunker, yeah, it's quite spacious. Not sure, someone mentioned on one of the forums that they're not tall enough for what you to take a uh, bolt action miniature. I don't have one to hand, they're in the other room at the minute. So we'll have a look at that when we get to the board, see what we can do. Yeah, but let me show you because I'm nosing at it. There you go. Yeah, and then that's the inside. Obviously, it goes down. Yeah, lid goes on, and then depending on how you have it. Yeah, I'm going to put it on a cliff. Yeah, and then finally the, the, the bigger one. Okay, now this is obviously, this is actually two-parter. You've got the main bunker. Yeah, phone call build again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always tricky dry brushing right up to the edge, isn't it? <laughs> the challenges of being a terrain painter, eh? Right, and then you've got this back bit. 
Yeah, now this is designed to sit up against the back. So you've got stairs going down into it and then stairs going up onto what is obviously the roof. Now I might put some sandbags across here. Yeah, just jazz it up and just break it up a bit. Yeah, but that's that bunker. Now obviously, yeah, to get a proper idea, we're going to need to see it on the table. Yeah, so it's going to be a bit weird this video because it's going to be a bit jumpy over places if you know what I mean. But let's have a look at it at the table, eh? Okay, next up we've got their anti-tank obstacles, yeah, which is a collection of different sort of anti-tank sort of obstacles. Yeah, if I pull around the back you can see that we've got various crocodile teeth, we've got various uh, cross frames and A-frames, yeah, and barbed wire as well. So let's pop this open. I've already taken the cellophane off and see what's in here. Ah, it's all on one sprue. Right. Okay, so, got barbed wire, yeah. A leaflet and then we've got the sprue let me get into this come on folks okay so here we go right that's what we're looking at so obviously we've got you know the dragon's teeth yeah we've got the cross frames and the a frames yeah and if i bring them up There's quite a few on here. I mean, what are we are talking about? There's 10 there, 8 there, 10, 10, 30, 38 uh, dragon's teeth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4 cross frames, 4 X frames. So I've got three sets of these. So how many are we looking at? There's no way I'm going to use all those dragon's teeth. Yeah? Uh, but I will use the cross frames for the, the, the beach defences. Yeah, so they're going to come in handy. Right, uh, the barbed wire is standard sort of hobby barbed wire, and by that what I mean is it's one thicker one, yeah, which is then wrapped around, has a thinner one wrapped around it, which is pretty typical for, for what you're war gaming. You can get more realistic stuff that looks more, and it's actually pretty much like razor wire, but this is a demo table in a, in a store, so I'm quite, I'd actually prefer this on this table, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. It's all about picking what's right for the table. You know, there's certain terrain you won't go near because it's too fragile for, you know, a demo table or an in-store. Now, I think the best thing I can do with this, because let's be honest, da -da, there you are. Yeah, I could call it that, couldn't I? Is, let's take you through the painting and then let's show you some pictures of it once it's finally what's got it done. So, once again with the funny jumping thing, is the future. Okay guys, next up we've got these simple sandbag uh, resin emplacements. I spotted these on the site, just asked, asked them to include a couple and they threw a load in. Yeah, now if I bring them up, the castings aren't, they're a little bit bitty in places, but it's not a deal breaker. Do you know what I mean? Considering, you know, how small they are. Yeah, you sort of get this with resin castings, especially stuff with lots of undercuts, etc. Yeah, it's basically where the mould rips as you demould in it. Yeah, and you'll see it on hard foam terrain and all sorts. But they're quite nice. I do quite like them. And they'll make great little scatter points. Yeah. Uh, once again, not much I can really say beyond, you know, they're quite nice and they'll make great little scatter points. So, let's jump to the future and I'll show you how I paint them. Bit of a simple one, this one. Yeah, it's their, what's it, barbed wire. Now, I don't know how long this is. How long is this? Come on, pop it out. Yeah, watch your fingers both. It's barbed wire. Right, so, uncurl that. How what easy is it going to be to uncurl? Yeah, that's all right. Right, I've got a ruler here. Well, just by chance, genuinely just by chance. Yeah, if I hold that there, let's get a rough idea of how long this is. Without killing yourself and tangling, I'll skip forward, guys. Right, all in all, it's about three meters thirty. 
yeah uh, so three meters thirty centimeters which is quite a bit actually now obviously in its current form it, it's not really what we need for wargaming yeah so a little tip for you yeah I can show you this now rather than skipping ahead to the board yeah I've got a couple of different dowels here yeah and all it is with this stuff is it's just a matter of coming down yeah putting your thumb over one end and wrap it yeah. it's going to take me a while to do this lot without getting tangled yeah but if I push it down yeah and that bits important to push it down like that yeah to get that curl yeah so you can do a few ropes and push them down obviously when you push them down it'll slacken a little yeah so you need to take up the slack yeah and what you end up with is your typical stylized barbed wire yeah just remember keep the tension on when you're doing it otherwise you'll end up with bigger loops and smaller loops and it won't look right okay so if, it, if you didn't tighten it up and push it all in you'd end up with different size loops guys now with this the, this is going to get draped all over the place to be perfectly honest yeah uh, I'll show you how I pin it in and you know we'll give it a bit of a wash with some blacks and some oranges to make it rust it up it'll look great guys right Here's the picks. Okay, next up we've got the barbed wire barricades from Foreground via Warlord. Yeah, uh, five frames for barbed wire, approximately 2.4 meters of razor wire included. Now, I've very quickly ripped the label off one of those, speed this process up. Obviously, Foreground, King of Laser Cutters, we've got their standard instructions. Doesn't look too complicated. I can see this being a Friday nighter. Yeah, I'm not going to put them together now because I mean, it's not that complicated to put them together. It's just a, you know, it's a cross at the end of the day. Yeah, standard laser cut. Yeah. So, you know, all of these go on the edges. That one, the middle one, goes through the middle, and you've got two little end caps for either side. Yeah. So, should be a doddle to put together yeah all right so put those there we've got more of the wire 2.4 meters now this is thicker wire than the stuff from warlord yeah yeah definitely thicker yeah so once again yeah this has got to be weaved in and out of the barricades yeah so i'll have to do some weaving guys um me weaving <laughs> right so yeah warlord not warlord yeah uh foreground so simple barricade, I think the easiest thing is just to get it put together and show you the pictures guys. So let's skip to the future with this one. Okay, guys, last but not least, their ruined farmhouse. Okay, a bit of weight to this. Yeah, I wasn't expecting the box to be this small. Yeah, so what have we got? Oh, another bag of goodies. Right. Yeah, just very quickly. Yeah, that's a picture from the front. And does it look pretty on the back? Yeah. Whether your games are set in Renaissance, Horse and Musket, or World Wars, this great plastic ruined farmhouse will provide you with an objective to take and hold or provide life-saving cover from enemy fire for your brave troops. Think about how think about hiding in, in rumble down houses is. It doesn't take much to get them collapse on your head. Just a personal observation there. Right, let's pop this open and have a nose. Come on. Come on, both wrestle the bag. Da, 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 da. Ooh! There's lots of bits in here, isn't there? Okay, so we've got some bigger pieces. They're quite chunky. Do you know what I mean? I, was, I wasn't expecting them to be that thick. There's a volume in that. That's quite nice. You have reason about neat detail on them. Yeah, they are hard plastic. 
Yeah, so, right, by the looks of it, yeah, the way they work is they've got these corner, uh, what are they, facades, yeah, of, you know, interlacing brick. And I'm imagining what happens is you come along and you do something along the lines of that, yeah, to sort of put your corners together. So what we got? Right, did it, did it. Put all the corners up there. Yeah, so there are the brick walls, two low ones, three high ones. Got another wall there. Let me move these up so you can see them. Yeah. Ah, we've got more wall, more wall. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure it's all in camera as well. Yeah. A couple of... That looks like... What's that? What do you reckon? Ah, right, yeah, that's corner rubble. So that, so these, yeah, that will fit up against the corner, yeah, to put rubble in the, in the corner, so to speak. Don't put baby in the corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Yeah, another one that looks like on a wall. I like those, that's handy, because I don't have to worry about doing specific rubble for the piece. Yeah, now we've got some floors. That looks like roof. Sorry, that looks like roof. Yeah, or what should be a roof. Yeah, and that looks like... Well, that's pretty obviously floor, isn't it? Yeah, a couple more bits of wall. A tall chimney stack. Are there any tall walls for it to fit against? What does it do? Go there. Where have they put it? Ah, yeah, they've got it running right in between. Yeah. Ah, I like that. Takes a little wiggling, but yeah. Okie dokie. Right, so plenty to play with, yeah? Once again, it's one of those products that I'm not going to do anything heavy duty to it, converting it wise. I'm basically just going to put it together and put it on the board. So once again, this is another sort of jump forward, yeah? And I'll explain it in pictures, yeah? So, I'll see you what you call it once we've jumped forward. So guys, here we've got the tank traps, we've got the sandbag bunkers that we green stuff together. Yeah, we've got the Warlord bunkers. Now they've all been primed, they don't need priming. And these are going to get painted on the table because it's easier that way. Okay, lovely pieces, absolutely lovely. Yeah, uh, I really like the, the tank traps because you get so many of them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so really great way of building a small collection. The bunkers are quite nice. I think once they've been, uh, once I think they're going to look really good once they're actually embedded into the mountain cliffs and you know what I mean, actually dressed and weathered. I'm going to repaint those on the board so they look a little bit more realistic because you can, you can see, you know, with this sort of paint texture, you can see the dry brushing. I mean, it's okay, but you know, I want better for the board. Right, let's switch over to the painted stuff. Okay, we've got the painted stuff. We've got the ruined farmhouse, a lovely building. We've got the foreground uh, barricades. Yeah, we've got some, what you call it, uh, anti-landing craft defences that are sort of knocked together out of the barricades, out of the central sprue and the cross. And then we've got some warlords. Uh, it's barbed wire, you know, anti-troop. Yeah. Now, let me bring this up so you can have a look. There you go. Okay, you've seen the stages, yeah, it's still, all of these have still got to be touched up when they're on the actual board and blended in, etc. But, it's a lovely way of getting some really distinct effects, you know, onto your, onto your models, and onto your board. So, you know, let me bring these up, because these are quite nice. You know, these are the foreground ones. Yeah. And then, no and then, no and then, let's set up for the long shot. So guys, that's it for this Warlord uh, Bolt Action Defences Barricades Product Overview. 
Yeah, as you can see, yeah, like I say, yeah, some bits are going to be prime, you're going to see on the table. You're probably not going to see the bunkers that much, to be perfectly honest, because Martin wants to keep those secret. Yeah, you've seen how I've sort of done the quick painting job. I mean, I say quick, you know, all in all, it's probably a day's work to put it all and, and paint them all and put them all together, etc. But, yeah. Once it's on the table and once I've dressed it, you know, with foliage, once I've tied it in with the colours on the table, it'll look absolutely brilliant. So, as always, guys, yeah, this is the sort of roundup. We have got lots of more interesting stuff. Sorry about starting the month with a product overview. Yeah, it's just the way these things roll. Yeah, coming up, we've got rock moulds, part two and part three. Part two, making your own rock moulds. You had it there. Don't drop it, folks. Yeah, part three, fitting all the rock moulds on. I'm doing that late, later this week, so, you know, I'm doing a good tutorial on that for you as well. Yeah, we've got uh, armatures coming, we've got twigs coming, we've got a few other things coming, to be perfectly honest. So we're really busy. Yeah, as always, if you've got any comments, any experience, any questions, yeah, comments is the place to put them. Yeah, like it if you like it, share it if you want to share it. And as always, guys, you know, I know it seems a bit silly shouting this one out on a product overview. It's not really a tutorial, but, you know, as always, if you do like these vids and they are helping you with your hobby, yeah, check out Patreon and consider a dollar a month. It may not seem like much, but it makes a massive difference to me, you know. It's the time, it's the resources, it's the camera kit for making these videos for you guys. And slowly, I'm getting better, yeah. And I'm learning two, two camera filming at the minute, that's going to be an adventure. Anyway guys, I've got lots to do. I've, I'm back in the studio tomorrow. We're calling it the studio now, so we can say, back to the studio. Love that. Yeah, so, uh, no doubt you'll see another vid from me before the weekend, and... If I don't catch you before then, I'll see you Sunday. All the best, guys, yeah? Ta-ra.